Hi guys, my name's uh, Doug, BudgetAstro.net, which will be my website when it's built, which it still isn't, uh, but it will be. Uh, they take time, these things. Uh, anyway, this is um, the first in a series of uh, videos on uh, basic processing of Astro images in uh, Photoshop. Um, this one covers the initial steps that you need to perform when you open an image, and uh, it's also an introduction to the histogram. Um, if you know about the histogram, you can skip past that bit. Uh, but for those of you that don't, it's uh, an introduction to the histogram and tells you what it's all about. Okay, you can see uh, on your screen at the moment, Photoshop, uh, which is what I'll be using for these tutorials. Um, there are obviously other packages available. Um, PaintShop Pro is still available, I think. They used to be free. I used to use that quite a lot of years ago, but I think you have to pay for it now. And uh, GIMP is another one, which is open source. That's a free program. GIMP, G-I-M-P, uh, GNU, image manipulation program. Um, unfortunately, I don't use either of them now. I only use Photoshop, so I can only do tutorials in Photoshop. But uh, all of the um, functions that I use in Photoshop, certainly for this series of tutorials, basic processing, uh, will also be available in PaintShop Pro and GIMP. It's just a question of um, finding them. OK. OK, first thing we're going to do is open a file. Uh, so you go up to File, Open, which is fairly standard, and that opens this box. Um, there's two files here we can open, autosave.tif and autosavecopy.tif. Uh, the also save.tif is straight off of DSS, Deep Sky Stacker, uh, and that's the uh, subject of my first tutorial, uh, which you can find on my channel if you want to see it. Uh, but I've made a copy of it, and that, that makes sure that we, we uh, retain the file that we uh, got off of DSS and we don't accidentally overwrite it. So I'll click on that, click on Open, and uh, it'll open it eventually. There you go, it opens uh, this window. Now I'm going to zoom into that just to explain what that's about. Okay, now what this is uh, telling us is the document uh, autosavecopy.tif does not have an embedded RGB profile. Now basically what that means is uh, the um, colour space that uh, the, the application will use to process the image isn't included in the image itself, as it very often is. Very often the colour space information is included within the uh, within the image itself. Uh, when they come off of DSS, it hasn't got that information. Or well, it certainly doesn't when I run them off of DSS. Um, the two most commonly used profiles are Adobe RGB, as you can see here, 1998, or sRGB. They're the two most commonly ones. sRGB is a slightly smaller color space. Uh, Adobe RGB, 1998, is a larger one, and that's generally used for printing. Uh, sRGB is used very often for web images and, and the like. But because uh, the Adobe RGB is uh, a larger color space, probably best to use that. Uh, so tick this box, so select Adobe RGB, 1998, there, uh, and that should be fine. There is a huge array. You can't see them all in the view we've got at the moment, but there's about uh, about 20 of them in this list. Um, a lot of them are probably very specialist, so I shouldn't worry too much about them. So select Adobe RGB and uh, click on OK, and that'll open the image. OK, there we go. Rather uh, fetching shade of red for some reason. Um, this is uh, an image of uh, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, uh, which I took uh, six or seven months ago, I believe, um, when I used to use a scope. Uh, I don't use a scope now, I just use my camera and a zoom lens, but uh, and it's not particularly well framed, as you can see, because it's here and it should be sort of near the center. There you go, we can fix that. Um, now the first thing you need to do uh, when you open an image from DSS is convert it to 16-bit because it will be in 32-bit uh, and there are many functions in Photoshop that aren't available in 32-bit which we will need to use um, and the way to do that is go up to Image, Mode, oh, do that again, there we go, uh, and you can see 32-bit is, uh, is ticked there. I'm actually going to zoom into this bit because it's probably not very clear at the moment. Uh, there you go, hopefully you can see that now. Um, well, yeah, you can see 32 bits per channel is uh, ticked, uh, and that's the uh, format that the uh, image is in at the moment. We need to convert it to 16 bit. Uh, now, if you don't know the difference between these three, 32 bit, 16 bit, and 8 bit, uh, this isn't a place to explain it, it will take too long. But uh, if you need to know a bit more, just uh, look it up on Google or whatever, and I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about it. Basically, 32 bit holds more information than 16 bit which holds more information than 8-bit. Uh, and we need to convert to 16-bit, so just uh, click on that and uh, and it will open another dialog box on the other side of the uh, window, which I'll zoom into as well. There you go, this is what it opens. Um, I always select Exposure and Gamma here. Uh, you, it will default, or mine defaults, to Local Adaptation, which is what you can see here, and you've got all these various adjustment points that you can make. Uh, but, it, but it does change the image. The image is a little bit darker, but the bit of the image you can see uh, is probably a little bit darker than... Uh, 
you remember it so to speak so I choose exposure and gamma which doesn't leave you too many options you can adjust the exposure very slightly if you want uh, if you do choose to do that make the uh, adjustments very tiny uh, and you can adjust the gamma if you choose to do that again if you don't know what gamma means just uh, look it up on Google um, but I tend to leave them alone uh, and then click OK and the image will convert to 16-bit um, and basically you won't see any difference okay there we go looks exactly the same as it would um, Okay, so we've done the first step, and that's convert into 16-bit. Uh, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the histogram. Now, if you know about histograms, uh, you can skip past this and go on to the uh, next tutorial. But uh, for those of you that don't, you can carry on watching. Uh, window and histogram. That will open the histogram over here, as you can see. Um, you can also, it's this thing here, this button here. That will turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, these panes here on the right hand side in Photoshop uh, are docked and you can move them about including this thing uh, I tend not to do that because I get in a terrible mess when I do that um, so uh, but that's up to you um, and that's how you can open the histogram that way or uh, window histogram uh, either way either way will do it's fine okay I've zoomed into the histogram now um, and basically what this thing is uh, this bit at the top is in is the separate colors uh, blue green and uh, red as you can see, the red's uh, slightly more to the white than the other colours, which makes it means the red's uh, slightly brighter, which is why the image is this uh, fetching shade of red. But we won't worry about that for now. We'll, we'll uh, balance this lot out eventually. Um, and you've got the, the separate channels shown down here, red, green and blue. Um, think of the histogram as a graph, really. Um, the black point is here on the left-hand side of the graph, zero. Uh, the white point is here, 255. Uh, and these are all the different tonal values in the image. So this is the, the, the histogram of this image. Um, as I say, 0 is black, 255 is white, uh, and all the different tonal values in between. Um, this scale here, uh, going up right, is, if you like, the, the count of pixels uh, for each of those tonal values. Uh, and you can see most of them, are certainly green and blue, uh, are sort of bunched up together there. Um, both the same more or less. Uh, red is slightly to the right which means they're slightly brighter which is why the image is, is this red colour. That's probably to do with the white balance when I took the image. Um, so that's, that's the way the histogram works. That's all it is basically. And what we're going to do, the whole, the whole purpose of processing an image is to stretch that histogram, stretch the image um, to, to, so that we use more of the available tonal range that's available, you know, the, the tonal range that's available to us between 0 and 255. Most of it will be closer to the black because astro images tend to have more black in them anyway because of the nature of the beast. Um, but, we, you know, we want to widen this histogram and, and bring out more detail in the image and that will, you know, have the effect of widening the histogram and uh, uh, taking up more of the tonal scale. Um, but what I want to show you just for now is, um, I don't know if you can see slightly to the, to the left of this sort of peak, uh, these little lumps, can you see that in all three channels? Um, I'm going to uh, close the histogram down now and then I'm going to explain to you what that is and uh, how we get rid of it. Okay, full, uh, full screen again now and I've zoomed right into the image uh, up to what, 2390% it tells me up here, so we're right down at pixel level. This is the edge of the image um, and c if you c I hope you can see, they're, they're slightly darker there, you've got this sort of margin, they're very thin line and that goes all the, all the way around the image, it's very thin when you're looking at the image, you know, the full image, you can't really see it, but it does sort of have that effect on the histogram that you saw, it gives you little lumps to the, to the left of the peak. Um, I don't like that, uh, now, so, so some uh, astrophotographers don't, don't worry about that, it doesn't really concern them that much, but uh, I like a nice sharp edge on the end of that peak and, and, and any sort of imperfections like this can have an effect on the, uh, on the processing, so I tend to take it out. Um, so I'm going to uh, zoom out now, and then I'm going to show you how to, I mean, basically we're going to crop the image, it's no big deal. Uh, so I'll zoom out again, and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll crop the image. Okay, there we go. Uh, now we just select the crop tool, which is over here in the uh, toolbox. Uh, cl click on that, um, and uh, get that near the corner, not right into the corner, uh, and click left click and drag um, to about there, something like that. Um, and that's selected an area that we want to retain and the dark bits you can see around the outside of the bits that are going to be cropped and that effectively takes off that uh, the very thin line going all the way around that thin line is is an artifact from DSS by the way deep sky stacker when it's stacking the images uh, it leaves a very thin line all the way around the outside of the image and that's the very first thing I do well it's the second thing I do actually the first thing is convert to 16 bit but the second thing I do is crop the image and I just take off that very thin line all the way around the outside um, if it's important to you to retain all the information right up to the edge of the field then you could zoom in here uh, and move this uh, this box so that it only sort of takes out that very thin line but uh, or, or you could leave the thin line in there it doesn't really matter uh, okay so we've uh, selected what we want to crop you right click 
click on crop and there you go that's cropped it now and if we open a histogram again and now you can see it's nice and clean I hope you can see that uh, I'm not going to zoom into it again but uh, it's actually nice and clean now there's no lumpy bits on the left hand side which is uh, good pleases me um, Alright guys, we've done uh, the first couple of stages, um, you know, the initial steps you have to do. I've introduced you to the histogram, hopefully you understood all that. Um, and the next um, video in the series, part two, uh, will be about uh, removing gradients. Because there is a gradient in this image, quite a bad gradient, which you can't actually see and you won't see until we start processing it. But uh, I'm going to take that gradient there and I'm going to use a tool called Gradient Exterminator, uh, which is a plug-in for Photoshop. So that's, uh, that's the, next, uh, the next video. Okay, speak to you, uh, see you later.